Are you ignoring the stress chemistry that may be reshaping your brain years before memory slips? The cortisol to DHEAS ratio that predicts whether you're moving toward resilience or decline. Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're examining how chronic stress, metabolism, and a simple hormone ratio intersect with Alzheimer's risk. We'll look at new research, what the ratio means for you, and how practical steps can shift your trajectory long before symptoms emerge. I'm Alara Skye. We're grounding this in a clinical study and analysis that connect cortisol, DHEAS, and cellular energy to early brain changes. The aim is clarity what to measure, what the numbers imply, and which everyday habits recalibrate stress hormones toward protection rather than wear and tear. A curious study of older adults compared people with diagnosed Alzheimer's to healthy peers and found a clear pattern. Cortisol ran higher, about 20% on average, while DHEAS did not fall. That pushed the cortisol to DHEAS ratio upward in the Alzheimer's group. The signal was strongest between ages 65 and 75, pointing to a window when chronic stress chemistry accelerates damage. The ratio mattered more than either hormone alone. You can have a normal cortisol reading and still sit in the danger zone if DHEAS isn't balancing it. Researchers also noted sex differences in healthy adults. Men tended to show higher DHEAS, but that advantage disappeared with Alzheimer's, suggesting disease processes flatten normal hormonal patterns. Age effects were nonlinear. Among those with Alzheimer's, DHEAS appeared higher at 60 to 65, dropped sharply at 66 to 75, then rose again after 75. That midlife to late midlife downswing looks like a period when compensatory systems falter. If you're in that bracket and facing persistent stress, it's a timely cue to intervene. Mechanistically, Elevated cortisol fuels inflammation and oxidative stress, suppresses new neuron growth in memory centers, and disrupts energy use DHEAS, helps stabilize neuronal survival and energy metabolism. When the ratio tilts toward cortisol, flexibility fades and networks deteriorate. The takeaway is straightforward. It's not only how high cortisol climbs, it's whether DHEAS is countering its effects. That's where bioenergetics fits. Georgi Dinkov's commentary ties the same ratio to low metabolic energy and thyroid sluggishness. When cellular ATP production drops through hypothyroidism, nutrient shortfalls, or aging, your body leans on cortisol to compensate. Over time, that compensation erodes glucose handling, heightens inflammation, and deepens vulnerability to neurodegeneration. He emphasized the ratio as a durable biomarker. Because daily cortisol fluctuates, Pairing it with DHEAS clarifies whether stress and repair are balanced. He also noted that hair or nail testing can reflect longer-term hormone patterns, offering a practical way to assess chronic stress rather than a single snapshot in blood. Why does this matter for prevention? Because the ratio flags risk years ahead of symptoms. If your cortisol stays high while DHEAS lags, you can act before memory changes. The first move is metabolic. Give your mitochondria steady fuel instead of forcing stress-driven workarounds that keep cortisol elevated. Fuel adequacy starts with carbohydrates. Cutting carbs too hard traps you in a stress loop because cortisol spikes to prop up falling blood sugar. The guidance here is explicit. Eat enough healthy carbohydrates, around 250 grams per day, to supply a reliable energy stream. Begin with simple options like fruit and white rice, then expand as digestion stabilizes. Training choices matter too. Overdoing endurance or high-intensity intervals keeps you in a fight-or-flight state, dragging cortisol into the night and compromising sleep shift towards strength work, walking, swimming, or dancing at an easy pace, and let post-workout calm be your gauge that you're restoring rather than depleting. Your breath is a fast lever, Rhythmic practices like four to seven to eight or four to eight breathing, inhale for four, hold briefly, exhale for seven to eight, 
Activate the parasympathetic system and help lower cortisol. Use them before bed, after meals, or during tension spikes. With repetition, the nervous system learns to exit emergency mode more readily. Light and sleep reset the daily rhythm of cortisol. Get outside within an hour of waking to anchor circadian timing. Dim screens and overhead light at night. And keep sleep and wake times consistent across the week. Better sleep clears stress signals and supports memory consolidation, making this an early, high-yield adjustment. Hormonal balance also responds to natural progesterone. As a bioidentical compound, it functions as a cortisol break, reducing overstimulation and supporting deeper rest. In the broader neurosteroid picture, protective hormones, DHEA, testosterone, progesterone, counter cortisol's catabolic pull and help restore a repair-oriented physiology. Several well-known compounds were highlighted for support of this shift. Aspirin, niacinamide, progesterone, pregnenolone, thyroid support, glycine, and emodin. Their shared theme is lowering excess cortisol signaling and improving mitochondrial output while favoring production of protective steroids. The goal is to reduce chronic stress chemistry and re-establish resilient energy flow. Put the pieces together and a pattern emerges. Persistent high cortisol with flat DHEAS signals an energy deficit masquerading as stress. Correcting the deficit, adequate carbohydrates, sane training, consistent light and sleep, targeted breath work, and appropriate use of natural progesterone rebalances the ratio and supports long-term brain integrity. Here's your practical challenge. Over the next two weeks, get baseline labs for cortisol and DHEAS, or arrange a long-term measure in hair or nails. Raise your daily carbohydrate intake to approximately 250 grams using fruit and white rice as starters. Add a 10-minute evening 478 breathing session and secure morning outdoor light within an hour of waking. Track energy, sleep, and mood alongside those steps to watch the ratio move in the right direction. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.